on this, our 10th episode of Linux Gamecast, we're going to round up everything that's happened in Linux gaming news for this week. Then we're going to take a look at the latest gaming releases. Plus, I'm going to show you just how easy it is to set up a PlayStation emulator under Linux. Let's go. On a rather delayed version of um, episode 10 in Linux Gamecast. Um, living in the south, we're not prepared for any type of ice or snow. Two inches and between power outages and completely no ability to drive on unplowed roads. Been a bit tied up with that. But let's get to the news. This week, Sedega has announced that they are closing down their paid subscription service. Now, you remember, a few years back, um, they pulled the main branch of wine and forked it and made some improvements, and that's kind of questionable, and nobody really used the product a whole lot. And... It wasn't much after that that um, vanilla wine gained parity with what Sedega was offering, and nowadays I have never even considered using Sedega or Transgaming's gaming on Linux, just because regular wine works nine times out of thirteen, and we have neat tools like Play on Linux that and wine tricks makes everything a lot easier. Second bit is something that really warms my feeling. It's about Amnesia, um, the guys at Frictional Games who also made uh, Penumbra, which is the um, horror suspense game. It was reviewed very nicely um, for an independent game. They're all a bit the same, but the neat thing is that they have sold almost 200,000 units, and I'd like to think that Linux users really helped out with that. They do know that, you know, on the downside, a lot of these units were sold with, well, at a discount, but regardless, they're not worried about paying the bills this year, and that's fantastic, and it's going to let them try some new things, so we might get a different type of engine. And you know, no offense, I love Penumbra 1, 2, and 3, and Amnesia, but, you know, it's really the same game. Great game, effective game. Really holds down that something's about to kill you right now button, and I don't have anything but, you know, a flashlight to piss it off with. So, good going, guys, and, you know, kudos to everyone who bought a copy of that. Third bit, open BVE. Have you ever wanted to sit at home and play a train simulation? <laughs> I can't say I have. I actually almost get people who um play Flight Gear. That's kind of fun. I think it's um rather interesting to learn the um pre-flight check and takeoff procedure for say a warthog. I can do that, and it takes about eight minutes to get it off the ground. Um, my takeoff to landing ratio is not always one to one, though, so I don't spend a whole lot of time doing that. And the idea of flying an aeroplane with a keyboard is tricky at best. But back to Open BVE, they have um, released the stable version and development version together. It's a train simulator. You go from point A to point B on the tracks. Uh, this is available in Ubuntu repositories. Easy to install. You can do it from source, but 
they have a very cryptic idea of how you should go about doing that, so keep that in mind. And the last bit is just another mention of JVGS. I still don't know how to enunciate that. That's the uh, minimalistic platform game with kind of an artsy tone. Definitely go back um, and check out our latest Be Real for some footage of that game and give it a go if you haven't. It's simple to install. Well worth your time. Now, that's going to wrap up the news. Um, on this, our tenth episode, I'm going to take a minute and, like I said earlier, show you how to get a PlayStation emulator up and running and Linux. That's not really the thing that surprised me. It's how easy it is nowadays and how well the emulators work. So, let's do that. Let's install PCSX Reloaded. This is, in my opinion, one of the better emulators for Linux, mainly because it does not require you to download a separate BIOS for the system, which is a bit of a legal gray area. So, let's skip the big button and go to View All Downloads. Chances are you'll be able to install it from a precompiled binary, and there's Fedora, Mandriva, Debian, and, of course, Magic Linux, which I've never heard of. If you're on Ubuntu, easiest way to install this game is to add the playdeb.net repository, which is simple as copying this line, opening Synaptic, going to Settings, Repository, other software, clicking Add, and pasting it in. I've already had this to my system, so installing should be as simple as typing in PCSX. Or, as you can see, it's already installed. However, say you do want to build it from source, piece of cake. Click that and agree to this draconian license. Now we're just going to open that up with ARC, and I will extract it to my Downloads folder. Let's close out of that. We have a terminal already open, so... We'll go into the directory. Simple as running configure make make install. Most of you know how to do this. Just run your configure. That's going to tell you about a couple of libraries that you might not have that you'll need to install. That's also in the install file. There's a nice list of From here, run make, and if you want to do a global install, sudo make install. And that should clear everything up. Now, if everything went smoothly, check your games directory, a folder, or the equivalent, depending on what distribution you're using. And you should get this. This is 1.7 Release Candidate 1. By default, everything is normally set up to where you would want it. Pick your resolution. And if you're going to go much larger than 800 by 600, considering the original intended resolution for this gaming system, you really want to use something like the HQ 2X or 3X scalers to help clean the image up a bit. And double check your controller options. I'm using a $9 9 button Logitech Precision gamepad. Cheap, effective, and it works perfectly since it has the exact same layout as the original PlayStation. And that's it. You can load a file directly from your original disk, or if you've bothered to rip them, you can go ahead and fire up the bin file, and as you can see, it should start right up with graphics and sound. Okay, I hope that was helpful, and LGC has allowed you to relive some of your fondest Barbie gaming memories. Cheers.